So this is the showcase. So imagine the situation that you have your client application that's in this case Microsoft Outlook connecting to Exchange Server. And there you have your mailbox. And in your mailbox, you have several other features like to see the calendar, to create the appointments, uh, to create the, the meeting requests. You have your contacts there and so on. And you have another account, another mailbox that you access as well, perhaps in different computer, in different location, which it is pointing out to a different exchange server. So here it is the graphical user interface used by the CB exchange server sync. Now basically what you have in the is in the left side of the screen you have the connection for your first exchange server and in the sec in the right side of the screen you have the connection to your second exchange server. Uh, note here that basically you can connect two different or synchronize two different exchange servers independently of the version of the exchange server that you are connecting. The, the way that the application works basically it is that you have a mailbox or a root mailbox in this case we have a user mailbox called CB01 that has or was granted permissions to read and operate items in child mailboxes. So imagine that you have in your company several users with several different mailboxes and they will be sharing permissions to a root user, in this case CB01, to have, uh, to have the permission to operate in their mailboxes, to perform the synchronization process. In our example here, we are using the same Exchange server, uh, just of, for matter of uh, infrastructure requirements and for the demonstration. So the root uses CB01, he has one mailbox, and people shared with CB01 permissions to operate in their mailbox items, calendar items, task items, and so on. When you click in this button here, basically we test the connection to those two exchange servers, and if the connection is correct, you're going to have a thick mark in both sides. You go to the next screen, and in the next screen, basically, you will start mapping the users that you want to synchronize. Most of the solutions out there, they synchronize either everything or one item. Our solution basically allows you to map what you want to synchronize. We're going to see this in a minute. When you type in the filter here and press the lupa, basically, we are going to Active Directory to look for mailboxes that are sharing the resources with the root user, CB01. So we have here that for the first exchange server, I have two users that are sharing with CB01, CB02 and CB03. And in the second exchange server, I have the same. What I would like to do is basically to synchronize items from my mailbox CB02 with my mailbox CB03. And when you expand the tree view here, basically you see the items that you can synchronize. So we're going to start very sim simple synchronizing calendar uh, items. So what I'm going to do is to click in calendar here of CB02 and calendar of CB03. I go to this arrow and then I have mapped that all the calendar items from CB02 will be synchronized with calendar items of CB03, as you can see here. The next step is to look here on the bottom of the screen and check the synchronization period. So you can customize this if you do not want to be intrusive, you can 
put this to run every one hour, every 10 hours, or in the certain uh, time period that you want. So we're going to synchronize here every 10 seconds just to see the results. And we start, we start basically the process here. Once you press this button, the service is up and running and this interface is not necessary anymore. You can close. There's a service in the background running that performs the synchronization process. So let's minimize here and let's see how it works. In order to, to, to visualize how it works, we basically have here one instance of Microsoft Outlook connected with the Exchange server to show how the items are synchronized. As you can see here, there are two accounts, one account for CB02 and one account for CB03. So if I go to the calendar, the one that we just mapped, I can start playing around here and check that uh, if the synchronization process is working. As you can see, uh, for November, we do not have for the CB02 any uh, item and CB03 doesn't have as well. So what we're going to do, today is 25th, 25, we're going to create the first appointment here and let's call appointment 1. When you create the appointment 1 here, the synchronization process, it will identif identify that there's a new appointment created and it will automatically synchronize with the second exchange server account, in this case CB03. And as you can see here, automatically appears the appointment. Everything that we are doing here is bidirectional. Or in other words, it's a synchronization. It's not an import of items from one to another one. It is a synchronization process. In, another, in other words, if you create an appointment to here, it will automatically synchronize with the first uh, uh, mailbox, that is the CB02, after the synchronization period it is uh, elapsed. There's a time to refresh the graphical user interface, yes, of course. Uh, this is working, as you can, as you will notice, to create the appointments. I created one appointment here, the appointment was created here. I created one appointment here, the appointment was created here. Uh, but of course, there are cases, and it's not uncommon, that you can update appointments, you can move appointments around. So let's try out to move one week earlier here, and let's move this one week later. So let's see how it behaves. Let's give some time for the synchronization process to run. So as you can see here, everything works properly. So this is the first uh, scenario that I would like to show. Uh, the second scenario basically it is a scenario with contacts. Contact is quite interesting and uh, we're going to do it with the contacts. Note that when I start the synchronization process, I mapped only calendar, but I could have mapped everything, yes? So what I'm going to do here is basically to go back in the process, I will stop. Yeah, now we have stop requested. The process, it will stop after it process everything that should be processed. And then we can continue with the mapping. Let's wait a bit. It needs to do some checkings. Then the process is stopped. Now what I would like to do is to synchronize contacts as well. And map here. We have the contacts to synchronize. I will start once again the, pro the, the process. Now it's running. We can minimize this or close. And now we can start synchronizing contacts. There, there are no contacts for the CB02, there are no contacts for the CB03, 
what we're going to do basically is to create a new contact for the CB02. Let's create a new contact called Jefferson. And let's save. Uh, it will require some title, mister. Okay, so there's a new contact Jefferson. And in CB03, we're going to create a new contact called Peter. And let's save. And mister. Okay, as you can see here already, for CB03, I have already Jefferson synchronized. And for CB02, let's see if the process already run. Not yet. Let's wait just a little bit. And here we have Peter. So it's synchronizing and just to finalize, I could do with tasks, with notes, but I don't think that this would be uh, uh, valuable here because the process is always the same, works in the same manner. Uh, another important aspect is always audit. It's uh, to know what is happening or what happened and who did that. So basically what we have, it is all the, the information about what was synchronized, when it was synchronized, and this can be used later on for audit processes. At this moment, I think that we reached the point that the, there is understanding about the tool, how it works, and perhaps there are some comments from Peter or from other people, and if you like to post your questions, please feel free 